Assalamu alaikum people, it is I, Mubaraka. Welcome and happy Wednesday. So today is Wednesday, March 3rd. And you know what month it is, people. It is my birthday month. Oh, let me move my cup on. It's my birthday month. So I'm feeling a little special, as you can tell. So today, people, we are talking about breaking a sugar addiction. What does that mean and how do we do it? And the three things that you need to do right now in order to break your sugar addiction. If you are just joining me, my name is Mubaraka Ibrahim. I am your health and happiness coach. And I am celebrating all month because it is March and it is my birthday month thank you very much thank you very much so i'm feeling kind of special and i decided to do a little oomph today and there's a few weeks to my birthday but we'll get to that in a minute we're doing a few giveaways i'm actually going to do a giveaway today if you would like I would love to do a giveaway today for you. So stay tuned because towards the end of the video, we're only gonna be here for about 30 minutes. Um, I'm gonna give away somebody who is watching is going to win one of my supplements, all right? So let's talk about sugar addiction. My name is Mubaraka Ibrahim, and if you believe that physical, mental, and spiritual well-being is intertwined, the weakness of one weakens them all, and the strengthening of one strengthens them all, then welcome! You have found your tribe. So, because we are a tribe and we are looking to become happier and healthier, the first thing that we have to do is get rid of our sugar addiction. What is a sugar addiction? A sugar addiction may be an addiction that you have that you absolutely don't even know you have. And the way that you know that you have it is you might need a frappuccino to give you an afternoon pick-me-up. Hmm. Are you one of those people? You might have a sugar addiction if you just cannot imagine your life without bread or rice or pasta. All of those things turn into sugar in your body and it can feed your addiction. We know from brain studies that sugar actually gives our brain a rush, very similar in lighting up the same areas of the brain as cocaine. How about that? So what do we, why is it not good to be addicted to sugar? And when I say sugar, I mean everything that turns into sugar in your blood and that includes carbohydrates it is not a good thing because it raises your insulin level and your insulin is da -da -da -da, your what do i always call insulin mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. your domino hormone your domino hormone sugar feeds insulin, which is your domino hormone. It is a domino hormone because it is the trigger for about a dozen other hormones, some good, some not so good, and also a trigger for many responses that we would rather not have, like an inflammatory response. We know that when insulin is high, it actually creates inflammation in our body. We do not want to constantly have really high insulin because when we have really high insulin, it creates inflammation in the body. You're gonna have joint pain. Inflammation is actually present when you have excess fat. When you are overweight, that is actually a form of inflammation. When you have diabetes, you have a form of inflammation. So if you have prediabetes, diabetes, PCOS, any of those metabolic diseases, then inflammation is a concern for you. We want to break the sugar addiction, meaning that we're not getting fatigued if we don't have sugar. We're not getting a headache if we don't have sugar. We're not feeling as if we are being deprived of something if we don't have sugar, right? Some of us really like throw a full tantrum. I've actually seen a couple of YouTube videos of people like really getting pissed off at Starbucks because they're out of a syrup. 
or that is a true sugar addiction. All right, so what do we do if we recognize, you know what, I think I might have a sugar addiction. And here's the interesting thing for people like me who absolutely love coffee and have to have it every day, not because they need the caffeine, but simply because really like the taste of coffee, I do. <laughs> But I don't drink decaf coffee because decaf coffee goes through a process of filtration that adds chemicals when it takes the caffeine out. So no decaf coffee. Just drink like Earl Grey or some type of tea that actually has reduced amount of coffee. Not a fan of decaf coffee, right? If they're decaffeinating the coffee, then they're doing that with chemicals and you do not want that inside of your coffee. That's an, that is an important port point for you to remember. Um, so what do you do? Sometimes your addiction in the morning that, oh my God, I absolutely have to have my coffee is really an addiction to the things that you put in the coffee and not necessarily the caffeine. All right. So how do you know this? When I have clients and I tell them, okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go completely sugar free. And they're like, well, why can't I just put a little bit in my coffee in the morning? I'm like, if the caffeine is so important for you, have the coffee black. And they're like, oh, I can't drink black coffee because you're addicted to the sugar, not the caffeine. All of those are signs of sugar addiction. So what do we need to do in order to get rid of sugar addiction? I'm going to give you three steps, right? And then I'm going to give you a freebie, right? Meaning I'm going to uh, give you a guide that you're going to download absolutely free. So the first step for removing your sugar addiction is quit cold turkey. Quit cold turkey. You cannot break a sugar addiction by saying, I'm going to reduce the amount of sugar that I'm going to eat. See, this is what happens. Let me tell you different ways in which people sabotage themselves when they're trying to get rid of their sugar addiction, right? Scenario one, I'm going to get rid of my sugar addiction by removing all of the candy, ice cream, cake, and all of those things that I know have sugar in it. I'm going to get rid of it out of my diet and I'm going to drink a smoothie every morning with bananas and honey and dates and all of those really good natural sugars. The last word is the key word, sugars. So, Important note, natural sugar and high fructose corn syrup affects your insulin level the same way. If you're going to get rid of your sugar addiction, you must go 10 days, seven to 10 days, completely cold turkey. That means no honey, no dates, no bananas, no fruit, because fruit is a source of natural sugars. I'm using those in quotations because sugar is sugar. Doesn't matter if it's natural or if it's not natural. So you have to get rid of it out of your diet. You have to go cold turkey. Research shows this, that people do not get rid of a sugar addiction if they are trying to reduce the amount of sugar that they're eating and they're not actually quitting cold turkey. Yes, you are going to have a physiological response. When people are addicted to sugar, you literally get irritated, you get fatigue, you may start getting headaches. Some people actually even get nauseous because they re their body is craving the sugar. So I would really recommend that you start on like a Thursday, right? Don't start the beginning of your week, especially if you gotta work, you gotta homeschool the kids, right? Because when it really hits you, you're gonna be in the middle of your week. Start on like a Thursday, because generally the first 24, 48 hours, you will be, you know, you will, mentally want what you normally have, your morning frappuccino or your morning juice drink or whatever. So, but it's more willpower and when it begins. By day two, you might start having a few bodily reactions, maybe headaches, maybe 
being tired, right? It's going to take your body a minute to get over those things. So you want to start on a Thursday, on a Friday or Friday because normally about the third or fourth day is when you're going to start feeling much better. It's really going to be about kind of breaking habits, right? Not sometimes, like literally, if you all of a sudden wasn't able to, you know, I don't know, if you had to write a note to somebody to every single movement that you made, you could probably, with your eyes closed, imagine yourself making your coffee. And it becomes very habitual. I know that my coffee is here, I put that in there, the sugar is there, I grab it and put it in there. It becomes habitual. So it's not even about you actually being um, intentionally doing things. You may mistakenly, right, out of habit, add the normal sugar that you do. So you have to break that habit in that addiction because it's both mental and physiological so quit seven to ten days no sugar that means no sugar in your coffee that means no fruit that means no honey that means no dates if it is something that you think has sugar in it don't have it whether it is artificial sugar or if it is natural sugar for 10 straight days, you will be so surprised at the end of that 10 days how sweet things that you never thought was sweet are. For example, nuts. Almonds are actually kind of sweet. Pecans are actually kind of sweet, right? You'll actually be able to taste the sweetness in nuts. And that is when you're actually enjoying your food. So that's number one. But one of the problems that we might have is you might have lots of cravings. So how do we do that? So my first tip, I said I'm going to give you three tips. My first tip is quit sugar cold turkey for uh, 10 days. My second tip is making sure that you are drinking lots of water during that time. And how much are, is how much is a lot of water? Water is half your body weight in pounds and ounces of water every day. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you should be drinking 100 ounces of water a day. If you weigh 150 pounds, you should be drinking 75 ounces of water a day, right? So half your body weight in water every day. Even when you're hungry, even when you're craving, especially when you're craving, right? Because one of the things that happens is when we are chronically dehydrated, our body will actually interpret de uh, dehydration for hunger. So before you, when you're cutting out that late night cookie or the late night ice cream, when you start having that craving of going in the kitchen and getting it, Drink water and wait 20 minutes. Most of the time, it will go away because you're actually thirsty. When you feel the sensation of thirst, you're already dehydrated. So your goal in terms of hydration should be not to feel thirsty. That is the important thing. Don't even get to the point where you're thirsty, right? That you should be drinking water often. Here's a tip about drinking water because one of the problems that people have when they drink a lot of water is they like, but I'm going to have to go to the bathroom all the time. Yes, you will probably, if you're normally really dehydrated, I'm not going to lie, you'll go to the bathroom more often. Okay, so that's what you do. Here's how you decrease how often you go to the bathroom. The reason why when people try to drink lots of water, they have to go to the bathroom four or five times, maybe every hour, is because they're drinking too much at one time. So according to research, we only have the ability to absorb about 16 to 20 ounces of water every hour. So if you're sitting down and you're drinking a whole 32 ounce bottle of water, when, because you've got one of those big, you know, water workout thingies, you, your body physiologically cannot absorb that amount. Now, I recommend that you stick to about 16 ounces because when they did the research for tw and came up with 20 as the max, they were actually doing it on marathon runners as they were running a marathon. Obviously, if you're sitting at your desk at work, 
you are sweating less than a marathon runner, moving less than a marathon mother, your muscles are not active while you're actually working on your computer. So I recommend that you keep it to about 16 ounces each hour. Don't drink more than that. And then that's gonna allow your muscles and your organs and your cells to actually absorb and use the water. And you don't have so much excess that you have to actually urinate out. So drink in smaller portions, all right? So that is the second tip. So remember, we gave him three tips today. First tip was quick sugar cold turkey for uh, 10 days. The second tip is to make sure you're drinking half your body weight in water. And your third tip is going to be increase your protein. Protein is a metabolically active my, a macronutrient, which means it increases your metabolism. That's number one. The second reason why increasing protein is going to be important is because protein keeps you full longer. It increases satiety. So when you are eating, when you eat protein, you don't get hungry as often. Now, if you followed me for any amount of time, then you know that I'm telling you, and I've always told you, stop snacking. You do not need to eat three meals and two snacks a day. That is a modern day invention that has no science behind it. It has no history in our human history. Like if you lived and worked on a farm, you would not be eating three meals and two snacks a day. If you only ate what you grew and what you raised, you would not be eating three meals and two snacks a day. In fact, since we've given that advice as a country and as the developed world, we've actually increased obesity. So, stop snacking. And how do you do that? You increase the amount of protein, delicious whole food protein. I'm talking animal protein, I'm talking cheese, I'm talking dairy, whey protein if you can't. Uh, you, if you can't uh, have, um, actually you know cook when you need to right but let me give you a, a, a asterisk on that i only believe in supplements supplementing food i do not advise people to use a supplement to replace a meal we are meant to eat bite something all right those are the three important tips that you are going to start today to get rid of your sugar addiction. So, in the meantime, because I love you guys, and I want you to also reduce inflammation in your body, I wanna give somebody, it's my birthday month, so I'm giving y'all gifts. I wanna give somebody my Golden Touch Supplement, which is a turmeric supplement that decreases inflammation. Research shows that it actually improves insulin resistance um, or decreases insulin resistance and improve insulin sens sensitivity. It decreases cholesterol. There are so many benefits to turmeric, but the most important part of turmeric, so if you want to go to shopfitmuslima.com and grab your turmeric with our birthday month uh, discounts, if you say happy birthday inside of the um, inside of the, as a coupon code, then I'm actually going to give you, I think it's 10 or 15% off. Just wish me a happy birthday inside of the coupon code when you uh, purchase $30 or more. Or if you live in the United States, you can actually, I'm gonna be 45. So once you spend $45, you can get free shipping any place in the US. Those are our two birthday codes for the whole month of March. So shopfitmuslima.com. But this is what I'm gonna do. For all of my people that follow me, I'm gonna ask you about the tip I gave you or the thing I shared about myself yesterday. And the first person that puts it in a comment, any place in the world, I will actually mail you my turmeric supplement for free. And my question is, yesterday when I came on live, I told you that my birthday was March 13th. But I also told you that I was born on the eve of a very special person's birthday. 
do you remember or what is celebrated as his birthday? Do you remember what day that is? Hmm. I am going to leave it up. I don't see anybody posting in the comments. So I will leave this up. I will leave this question out there. Yes, her hijama got it. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes. Alhamdulillah. DM me your address and I will email you um, the Golden Touch supplement. Thank you. So that was the thing that I told everybody yesterday about myself. I was born March 13th, 1976. And in 1976, the 12th of Rabi al-Awwal fell on that day. And I was born on Maghrib on that day. How do you do that? All right. Tip about me today for your chance to win. And you actually have until Monday for, no, I'm sorry. No, nope, today's Wednesday, Thursday, because I come on on Thursday, but then, I, then we uh, don't see each other for the weekend. So the tip for today about me is I was named Mubaraka. So this is going to be a part of a story you're going to have to remember for tomorrow. Okay, so I was named Mubaraka, which means the blessed one, because my parents tried for several years to have me after my older brother passed away, and his name was Jalal. All right, and uh, he... Um, he drowned when he was inside of a, a well when he was three. Um, and I've told this story before because I last summer I learned how not this summer, yeah, this summer I learned how to swim and I overcame this fear. And so I'm going to ask you the name of my brother Rahimahullah who passed away, who would have been three years older than I am tomorrow. His name was Jalal. So tune in tomorrow and see what you're going to win. Uh, and by the time my birthday comes, you're going to know all kind of stuff about me. So, <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, inshallah, I will speak to you guys tomorrow. Hopefully you are going to start putting in place the things you need to do to break your sugar addiction if you have not already. And until then, you guys have an amazing day. Remember to do something that makes you sweat and to eat lots of cooked green veggies. So far, I've gotten my hour run in and I'm going to go make me some delicious lunch now. All right. Assalamu alaikum.